Hey guys, it's Tom Vox here, and I guess I'll get straight into this deck profile for you guys. So this is my Sky Striker Ace deck profile, and I've done a proxy deck profile about this before, and I kind of went into detail explaining every single card. I'll go through it again, but this is my updated build, so I definitely would recommend trying this one out. Uh, remember, this is just like a foundation. You guys can change it to how you like it because it's honestly a very flexible deck where you can insert text or even modify the ratio as you like it or as you need. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt if certain cards aren't there for you or if you think certain cards don't even need to be run. You can leave it down in the comment section below and let's just get straight into this. So, Sky Striker Ace Ray. Now, she's Ray now. She's spelled a little bit differently. Um, I think she is a flex card. You can choose to run, the, to run one or to run three. I honestly don't know. I like seeing her, but at the same time, having too many copies of her is kind of awful. But she is very useful. Remember, I like the effect where she can, uh, whenever your uh, Sky Striker extra deck monster is destroyed, you, she can come out of the graveyard, and then her quick effect allows her to just tag straight into a uh, Sky Striker ace in the extra deck, like Agari and most of them can trigger off their effects the moment they're special summoned, so it's really neat. I'm gonna say I like the flexibility, and she tributes herself, which is why I run another card uh, in this deck. But now let's go into the hand traps first. I'm only running two copies of Ash Blossom Joy Spring. I can actually run an extra copy, but right now I'm just trying to fit more cards in. I kinda wanna see a bit more spells and hand traps, just so that I can get my engage. I'm playing a bit more aggressive than most, but I think you can actually up this to three if you really need to. So you can just switch that in there as well. And the other hand trap, Ghost Ogre. It's really hard to actually find space, even though your monster lineup is pretty small, but Ogres is really good, especially when you want to take out in the mirror match, uh, say the multi-roll. You just don't want them to get that off. Now my one-off tech choice right here, it is going to be Darkest Diablos. Um, in the mirror match, this card's quite difficult to get rid of because they can't target it. And beating over 3k will require them to have over 15 spells in the graveyard. Overall, not being able to target it can't be kaiju. It's pretty good and you can rip cards out of your opponent's hand. However, in this deck itself, there is one out that's... Uh, I'm not sure if anyone really runs it. It's Jamming Wave because Jamming Wave doesn't target which makes it so that you can actually pop Darkest Diablos. But when you pop Darkest Diablos, uh, just bear in mind that if you do kill off another copy of the extra uh, extra deck monster, whether it be Kagari or Shizuku, you can bring out your uh, Maiden Ray and then tribute it and summon this guy back onto the field. So I don't know, what do you guys think about that? So that's basically it for the monster lineup. Let's go into spells. Uh, Sky Striker Mobilize Engage, this is a must 3 of, this is the best card in the deck. It basically acts as half Pot of Greed, half Search whatever you want. I don't know, not once per turn, but the only condition is you don't control anything in the main monster zone. And that's actually something people that tend to forget a lot, is that they keep on forgetting that they can't activate most of the cards when they have a monster in the main monster zone, which makes Kaiju a very good counter against this deck. And then Triple Drones, or Horny Bits. That's what I like to call them. Um, when you go into engage, you most likely don't want to go into raid. You rather go into the, the drones because you can actually put more spells in the graveyard. And because of that reason, most of the time engage in the early play will go into a hornet uh, rather than going into ray. Unless you already have enough spells, then you might go for the ray earlier because you can set up a stronger defense. But aside from that, um, I don't know. This is a must play because you can immediately link into your Kagaris or Shizuku. Basically, you can engage into uh, the key components of the deck. I'm teching one Ego Booster. It's just really fun, especially when you don't use the um, Sky Striker monster. When you're about to win, this is the card that's just a bit more safe because your monster cannot be destroyed by battle if you have three or more spells, and the other effect is that uh, it's unaffected by all card effects until the end of the turn. Uh, that makes it very safe, especially if you're holding on to like a Nightmare Griffin, and that just kind of annoys your opponent a bit more. Griffin's really good against the, the deck overall, but I'm 
there is a problem where a griffin can get popped. This can protect the griffin and basically turn off your opponent from using their own Kagaris. Uh, that's just an option you have. There's lots of flexibility because it's just generic protection right there. Now for my next card, I have Triple Widow Anchor. It's just a must play. You can play two or three. Some people are saying two is completely wrong. You have to play three. Some people are like three is a bit much. You can clutter your hand. But because naturally it is a spell card, I think it is worth trying at three. And at worst, it's an effect failure. At best, it's a snatch steal. Yeah, this card is just really good. But you have to be very careful. After playing a couple of mirror matches with the proxies, I've come to realize that this card in the mirror, sometimes you take the monsters and sometimes you don't. You just really have to prioritize what do you have in your back row and what you want to stop. Because if you take it at the wrong time, you just stun your own back row and you get yourself killed. And as for my double effector, which is like the double pops, uh, we have afterburners. Afterburners, they're all right. Um, actually, they're very good because they also pop spells. And first of all, remember that this card, when you do have three spells or traps, it doesn't target the spell that it pops. So yeah, and also you don't actually have to pop the monster to get the spell pop, but you need a monster target to get there. Okay, so you can't activate this card when your opponent doesn't control a monster because you have to meet the activation condition. But once you get past that, you don't have to destroy the monster to get the second effect of popping the spells and traps. Area zero, two of the field spells. I love this card. This card's excavation is really good. It pairs off really well with Ray because Ray can just uh, basically what this card does is it lets you excavate three, but you have to target one of your own cards. And if you do successfully excavate, you have to send that card to the grave at whatever that you targeted. However, if you use Ray, you can just immediately just use your quick effect to tribute yourself off, still get the excavation for free, and basically go into your uh, extra deck without any cost really, and getting a free excavation. But when this card's sent to the grave, I get a free raid, so that's also pretty nice. And for the, some of the one ups one Hercules base, this is just a recurrence because we don't have Digasto Emerald. So without Digasto Emerald, this is one card that lets you reuse your Kagaris and your Shizukus. And you'll be burning through Kagari and Shizuku super fast. And this card's pretty useful. Now, aside from just the recovery effect, which is when this card's sent to the graveyard, you can also use this as a double swing. And the double swing is just amazing. It kind of reminds me of um, Spirals a little. Uh, the continuous mission card uh, for spells. Yeah, whenever you are able to destroy a monster by battle, you can draw a card. So that's pretty amazing. And I think aside from that, you can't attack directly. So there's a bit of restriction. Jamming Wave. Jamming Wave, I talked about it. It's not exactly the best because you can only hit set spells and traps. Yeah, so it's a bit limiting, but you can pop any kind of monster. So you have that flexibility. You can use this to actually pop your own cards. It makes a lot of sense. Like if you set like an area zero or you set yourself one of your tech cards. For me, I can set a metaphors fusion and then I get myself a draw and then use it as a monster pop. In other words, you can use this as flexible as you can for the situation that you need to be. One Shark Cannon, this is potentially one of the best cards, but you def don't want this early because there's no point in using this. You can choose whether or not you want to banish or special summon the monster if you have three or more spells in the grave. Just bear in mind, some cards you don't want to take, some cards you do, because remember, if you do take the card during your opponent's turn, you shut off your other back rows, but Sometimes you can get a monster that does have a quick effect as well. And remember, the effect is not negated, so there's that benefit there. Another one of that's awesome, we have multi-roll. Multi-roll is basically spell book of judgment in some cases. It's, it's a, not exactly a fair comparison because the mon the cards that it sets back into the back row um, gets banished if you use it again. So that is a trade-off. So what does this do? Whenever you activate a spell card, you, not spell card, but a Sky Striker spell card. Uh, you can tally up how many you activated and you just go into your graveyard and then you can reset them onto the field. But you can only choose different names and they get banished at the, well, when they leave the field. So there is a bit of a trade off. But the other thing is you can also use this card to send another card you control to the graveyard. And then from there you can, uh, well, basically all your spell cards cannot be uh, reacted to. So your opponent can't ash you or anything. So yeah, there's that. Now for my other spell lineup, 
Foolish Burial Goods. Now, one thing I did cut out of this deck are the Tune Table of Contents. I cut the Tune Tables because opening multiples is pretty dead. It's like a Garnetty hand. To Foolish Burial Goods has more flexibility. If you open with a Hornet bit and a Foolish Burial Goods or just Ray and a Foolish Burial Goods, you're getting engaged immediately. Like you don't have to dump this card, uh, which is uh, Metal Force Fusion, which is normally the typical dump because if you actually go into Foolish Burial Goods, dump this, you need one more card and you already have three. So if you have engaged in another card, you might as well just burn off a card and then just play this. Don't immediately shuffle this back into the deck because if you shuffle Metal Force Fusion back into the deck, uh, you'll be short a card. Well, you'll be short a card in the graveyard. You can get this later on after you kind of sift through the deck and just make your power play. But yeah, Foolish Barrel Goods, it's very, very useful. You also have one of this, one of that. Uh, so this is Rhoda and Foolish Burial. Foolish Burial could be for Ray, could be for Darkest Diablos. Uh, as for the uh, Rhoda, there's only Ray. But it mainly is because you want to thin out your deck and you just want to play a smaller deck. And this also synergizes very well with the whole spell lineup. And you have to play three of these, Call by the Grave, because this deck is exceptionally weak to Drawn Logbird and Ash Blossoms. So if you are able to hit them with Call by the Grave, it just is amazing because, well, they're basically not, they're down a card and you still get to play, and this is also a spell card, so you're ahead uh, with, in terms of like setting up your three spell grave. One Cosmic Cyclone, I can play another one, but it's mainly just useful useful spells uh one upstart 39 card deck and it's a spell so it also you know goes towards that goal of just being able to activate your secondary effects and triple impermanence you want to use this against the kagari uh in the mirror match i'm just gonna mainly get to talk about the mirror match because if you actually stop three kagaris they are so so slow after that and if you're able to prevent their uh Hercules base from going off, then you're in a really nice position. But yeah, that's basically the main deck. And I'll show you guys my extra deck now. So for the extra deck, let's just start with the basic stuff. You have to play three copies of Kagari. You'll burn through these super, super quickly. Uh, of course, on special summon, you get to add back one of your Sky Striker spells back into your hand, which is amazing. And that lets you, if on a really, really good turn, you can activate uh, the engage like four times in one turn. That's really amazing. Uh, next one would be Shizuku. Of course, Shizuku is your end phase ender. She does have a bit of a restriction in terms of what she can search back. So what, during the end phase, you can, on the turn that she is summoned, you can actually target uh, a card. I guess you can search a card in your deck and add it to your hand, but be careful. You can't add stuff that's already in your graveyard. So that's a bit of a limitation. And for every single copy of the spells you have in the graveyard, your opponent loses 100 attack and defense. Link Aribo is mainly an option card here to actually help you uh, push for damage. And it just helps you get Link into other things and that's why it's there. Also, I guess you can also use the Tribute effect to protect yourself and get a Darkest Diablos back out of the deck, or out of the graveyard. And then Nightmare lineup, I run Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn, and a Nightmare Griffin. These are all just really good standalone cards and because the deck does not run from the main monster zone, even though you're not really co-linking these, you still get some value out of each one. Unicorn can answer a card on the board. Griffin can lock your opponent out. Phoenix is just a back row popper, which can be useful, but it's 19 beat six, so all of these monsters are pretty decent. Now for some of the more fun stuff, I kind of want to talk about Deco Talker. I guess I'll throw Borload in there too. Um, Deco Talker is actually mainly a push card. When you actually go into your, uh, I guess your Hornet Drones, when you go into Hornet Drones, the problem is that they always come in defense mode, so you need to convert it into something else. And you, when you're trying to push for damage, you need arrows to point downwards so that you can actually link off, which is where uh, if you do start to link off with the tokens, and you don't go into Kagari or Shizuku, you can start off with a Link Karibo and then eventually work your way up, especially when you burn off all the Widow Anchors and the uh, Shark Cannon and the Hornets. That's when you can really push for damage, but that's the problem. 
these cards don't exactly push for anything. Most of the stuff is coming out in defense mode or can attack, so you have to convert them into damage. And using Deco Talker, Link Karibo, you can get there. And you can even go into Borload. Borload is just a self-sufficient monster in general and doesn't exactly require too much protection. Now, in the case that you do push really far, you can go into Saryuja or you can go to Topologic Bomber Dragon. Topologic Bomber Dragon, obviously a game pusher, but with the Hornet Drones, you can activate your card uh, and then summon a drone or a token onto where it points to and then blow up the board acting as a makeshift dark hole against your opponent or torrential where you get to keep the monster. And of course, when you swing with this, it does burn your opponent. Or Saryuja, you get the four card draw. It's pretty easy to actually get the four card draw, especially with Widow Anchors, where you steal your opponent's cards to actually get there. It's amazing. And as for my last card in the extra deck, it's actually a Spiral Double Helix because I just added it for a Reaper target. That's about it. Now, as for my, as for my side deck, I'll start off with Triple Typhoon because people are gonna side pretty heavy against this deck, and the deck doesn't run spellcasters. So if you do get locked down by a uh, spellcasters uh, secret village, uh, you can use Typhoon to take it out, or you can use it to hit a Pendulum card. You can also use this card to say, I guess, hit an anti-spell fragrance. It's just a lot of stuff you can use to hit with. And speaking of other cards to play with, uh, you can use Evenly Match to also take out problem cards like that. It's just, Evenly Match is just super strong. Triple Ghost Reaper Winter Cherries. I'm actually considering maining this card against the Mirror Match so that you can actually just take out the Kagaris. Once you take out the Kagaris, it's not as hard because you it's not that grindy anymore. Your opponent has limited resources at that point and uh, they're not able to retrieve their cards. But you can also use it to hit other cards. If you can make space in your extra deck, then why not? Triple Red Reboot, again, it's just options to stop all the traps because you don't want to run into a line full of traps. And you do have problems dealing with some traps in some cases, which can really slow down your tempo. But Red Reboot is just a really good card. To me, it feels like Cold Wave. And last but not least, Triple Drone Lockbird because you can use this against the mirror. If your opponent has Call by the Grave, they have Call by the Grave. But that just means that your opponent can't draw lock you. Remember, Call by the Grave is for both players' turn, so... If they call you, then you are also you know, safe from getting uh, Joel Lockbird. And that's it for this deck profile. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, I didn't really go into too deep of an explanation. I'll try my best. And also, it's super late right now, and I'm just trying to sneak a little extra video in. So if you guys enjoyed this video, hit me up with a thumbs up. If you guys want to see more stuff from MSD.TV, uh, hit that subscribe button. Really appreciate you guys for doing so. And as always, don't forget to hold on to MSD.TV, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I got some live feature match to actually show you guys. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MSD.TV and I'll see you next time.